Year. Well, Happy New Year 2017. I can't believe it's here. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Welcome to Create Talks. We have as my wonderful friend and guest, mm -hmm. Pam Spinozzi. And Pam has been involved. In fact, she moved here in 2005 mm -hmm. to do the School of Ministry. And then after that yeah. first year, just jumped right in to all different kinds of stuff of editing and of like really helping out as far as the testimonies. But we'll get, we'll, we'll get into that later. But if you love to write or if you have had a secret in your heart, like, oh my gosh, could I really do that? This is the broadcast. And if you know of people that want to, this is your broadcast as well. So share, share, share. Uh, so I'm going to start with Pam. <laughs> I know that Pam has a huge love for literature, <laughs> love, just loves words and loves books and mm -hmm. loves all that stuff. So tell me, like, what is your journey? How did you get started in education with books and with jumping into having this be your livelihood? Well, I've always loved um, words. I do love words. And um, my mother read to me when I was, from the time I can remember. Oh, come on. And I, I just wanted to say, if you have a kid, <laughs> read to them. Because there's this one um, really great children's book author, Mem Fox from Australia. And she has a whole book about how important it is to read to your children. Oh, wow. And I really think it's part of why I love to read. I love words. I, yeah. I still remember my books that I had when I was three. You Come know? on, I know. Yeah, and then I became an English major, and I, I can remember sitting in the library for hours, writing my essays and doing my research, and I think I felt the Lord's pleasure when I was doing that, because it's just, wow. yeah, who I am, I think. It's amazing how we we tend to look at growing up as not being instrumental in where we're headed. Yeah. But that's just totally false. That's true, yeah. And that we can be a, we can play a part in that. That's mm -hmm. what's huge. Mm -hmm. And when you came here, you began this thing called really recording testimonies, which we really didn't have at Bethel at that time. Oh, yeah, we did. I was the third person, actually. <laughs> but you were the third person that got it to actually work. Oh, it's it's exciting because we have so many. We can't <laughs> keep up with them. <laughs> but they, they just kind of, you know, it's like a wave of the sea overwhelming us. So tell me, because this is really a part of my heart, too, because I love testimonies, yeah. uh, as you all know out there. But what is the power of recording testimonies that you have found, just historically, but also at Bethel? Yeah, um, the first time I ever heard Pastor Bill speak was in England, actually. And I remember him, it was actually a, a testimony about Chad. He, and he said about of course. how he had, um, he had prayed for this lady, and she could suddenly hear and just as he said that, a guy in the audience, his um, hearing aids got too loud. And Come he on. was healed hearing the testimony. So we know that, that the testimonies breed testimonies. Like, it's so powerful. But I also think um, that it's, it's really important because testimonies help us remember what God's done and see what his nature's like. You know? Totally. So in our culture, you know, people will write into Bethel and say, hey, I have this disease or my friend has that disease. Do you have a testimony for yeah. it? Because they know it's going to build their faith and they're going to see it too if they, you know, feed on that. But I think that the yeah. Israelites, they, in the desert, they forgot that God had taken care of them That's so many right. times. That's right. And if we forget what he's done, we'll not be thankful and we won't be expecting anything. So that's the importance, I think. It really is. I mean, throughout all of the Psalms, it talks about mm -hmm. recording the testimonies yeah. and telling the next generation yeah. the good things about what, what, what has happened. And mm -hmm. it feeds you, doesn't it? So much, yeah. It's just so important. Yeah. I love that part. And so I just want to encourage you out there, get a hold of the testimonies. They're fully, you can look at them on, on our site and see the goodness of God every single week and be encouraged. Yeah, we have so many testimonies of people being healed hearing a testimony. You know, isn't like it that crazy? One. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? Who here knows of somebody who is sick? So I want you to look at that. Get Look at those testimonies. I know that there's testimonies of almost every single disease of someone Somewhere. being healed. So why not? This is our time for breakthrough, right? Yeah, and you know what I've noticed over the years? Sometimes when a bunch of people are all looking for a particular testimony... And if we don't have it, I'm starting to expect that we will. 
Like come that's on. the next thing that's going to come in because that's happened before. That's right. It happened with autism. Yeah. Years ago, people from three different countries were asking for an autism testimony, and I didn't know of any when I first heard that. And then since then, there have been so oh, many. So many. So many. So many healings. I'm expecting that for ALS. Me too. Mm -hmm. I need, we need to see that yeah. and breakthrough and yeah. Parkinson's and so many others. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, now I know that you've been involved in editing <laughs> so many books here at Bethel mm -hmm. and other people. And for those who want to pursue writing that are viewing this broadcast, mm -hmm. how important is editing? How important is that journey? Um, I think everybody needs an editor. Good, good writers have editors because you know, you need another pair of eyes. Sometimes yeah. you think that you've made sense, even in a, in a particular sentence. And the, another yeah. reader's like, huh, what did you mean? You know, so it's, it's helpful. But there are two kinds of editing. There, there's content editing, which kind of helps you change sort of the way you, oh, yeah. you say it, you know, in terms of what you put in it. Yeah. And then there's copy editing, and that's where they you know, put the cosmetics on it. <laughs> That's more what I do. I, I think... Because I love grammar. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. Believe me, I know she loves grammar. <laughs> uh, she... One of the things I love about an editor from my own personal experience and even my book, Born to Create, is like sometimes you're going in a different direction and when the editor sees it, they can see things with because they've edited so many yeah. books that you can't see. That's so I true. want to encourage you to get an editor even before you start because that's part of the process too mm -hmm. of looking at the content and what you have. Mm -hmm. So in your opinion, if 2017 is upon us and people want to possibly write a book, what, how would they start? What do you think would be the first things that you would do? Yeah, um, I sometimes think there's too much of an emphasis on writing books. Because I don't know that everybody should start with a book. I think sometimes it's kind of getting the cart before the horse. Mm -hmm. I think if they're already writing, then maybe they can start a book, you know. But but sometimes you just have to start writing, you know. Like, are you writing, as, did you write essays in college? Did you, have you kept a journal or do you have a blog, you know. Like, get the writing juices going. Or, or submit an article. Yeah. Things submit like an that article. that you can like get people's opinion on. Yeah. I really think there are so many places where you can enter a writer's contest or send a little short totally. piece. Totally. And I think people should start with shorter pieces yeah. and get their writing juices flowing first and then maybe think about a book. But, but a book isn't the only thing. Do you know that more people will read an article? If you send an article to a big magazine, more people will get to read that than possibly a book if you write it. Did you know that? Isn't that something? I had no idea about that. Yeah. That's crazy. So I think that, and sometimes people are daunted by books. So if they are ready to write a book and they're like stuck, I think one of the reasons is they might be an external processor and they might just need to tell somebody about it. And then once they get someone that'll sit and listen and maybe even take notes for them, they, it helps them start. That's amazing. And the other thing is some people are daunted by books because they think they have to start at the beginning. And you don't. You just have to start. You can do the beginning later. You don't have to do things in order. Doesn't, don't you feel better? All you people out there that don't do everything in order, this is good news today. Pam has good news for you. Yeah. Well, William Zinzer, who wrote a lot of books about writing, oh, yeah. he said, if, for example, if you're going to write your life story, you're going to write your memoir, what you do is you write a short thing um, in, uh, like you write like a short three to five page story that you remember from your life. Yeah. And then you write another one and another one. They don't have to be in order. Then you spread them out and you start to see a pattern. And then you can Oh, plan. that's so good. Yeah. There's so many tricks. I, yeah. I just want to encourage you. And Pam's going to share with you some good books on how yeah. to get started. But we have a, a question from Victoria Randolph. She asked, what is the link to our um, testimonies? Oh, well, for Bethel, it's just our, our main webpage, ibethel.org. And then if you look, you'll see a testimony link. And it has written and video testimonies. I don't, I'm not involved in the video ones, but they're phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. I just want to encourage you. That's so important to feed your heart, feed your soul. So get involved yeah. that way, too. Uh, other thing, another door that you have opened is 
your children's books. That's been something that you've mm -hmm. been doing for yeah. a while now, yeah. which I love. I personally love children's books. I do too. <laughs> but but why are children's books so important? What yeah. what <clears throat> why do you? And I know that you've even gone by a, a pseudo name. Yeah. Yeah. But share with us about that. And you have one right here, right? Yeah. Well, I think children's Amazing. books are so essential because. What you read as a child really affects you. Yes. You know, I remember what I read as a child and, you know, what I was looking for and what I was hungering for. And yeah. um, there aren't enough good No, books. there's not. And especially for Christians, you know, with yeah. our worldview, yeah. I think it's super important. I love what Madeline Lengel said that, you know, if I'm a Christian, what I write is going to be Christian. It doesn't have to be overtly so. Yeah. But I love both. I love overtly Christian books and then books that, that have the Christian worldview and that have a, like, sort of, later in life you might go, oh, that's what that was about. Like, for me, one of my favorites is um, The uh, Velveteen Rabbit. Mine too. To me, I feel like that's such a spiritual book. Score. Velveteen you know I mean? Rabbit, if you have not read I it, you need to get it today. And, you know, in this book, the reason I brought this book, this is not an overtly Christian book. Get me book, to the sea. But for me... This book is about um, until we get to Jesus, you know, it's kind of scary. <laughs> you know, anything <laughs> could happen to us. And it's wow. like you just want that. You're looking for something, just like that little turtle's longing to get to the sea. And then once he does, his life begins. Wow. And I, I'm just hoping that someday some kid will go, oh, that's what that book was about. It was about Jesus. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do. It's what it was about for me when I conceived it. Oh, my gosh. And then... Yeah. I think we got the honor a couple years ago. Pam mm -hmm. really wanted to do a book on Heidi Baker's life, which obviously she's my hero. She's yeah. so many heroes. And who, what child um, doesn't need to hear about Heidi Baker and find out about what she does? I mean, we have so many books out there that yeah. that don't tell about like yeah. people that that actually heal the sick and yeah. that actually take people in that that are doing amazing things and to and to impact a child on that was huge. Yeah. And so we collaborated, we, we collaborated yeah. together, and it was so successful. Yeah, I want to share something quick about that. Um, I got that idea one day after hearing testimonies about her. And wow. It, and I, my desire was that really little kids would hear about her, so I wanted it to be simple. Because I think there aren't enough books for two- to five-year-olds that say, hey, you know, this is what you could do with your life. Totally. And so I got a testimony last year that just blew me oh, away. Yeah. That yeah. what I had wanted for that book really happened. When this lady from Switzerland came and told me that she had bought that book for her. I don't know if they were two and four then or three yeah. and five. But her little boys were so inspired by it that they started praying for Mama Heidi. And one of them wants to go to Mozambique. So it's Come like, on. it accomplished what I wanted. I it want, totally did. You're never too young to get a call from God or to get a no. vision for what God could do with your life. And it's great you know? because in the back of the book, we added in a, a place where you could actually lead people, lead children to Christ because mm. we felt like it's it's time that we took seriously the gospel. Yeah. And I remember when I, I mean, I came to the Lord when I was very young and that's what we want. We want our kids to be inspired by yeah. others. One of the greatest missionaries I've ever met got his call at five. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that huge? Yeah. You could be writing children's books that actually find the next revivalist that transforms all of Asia or whatever. So think about the power of words, the power of illustrations, the power of, of what you want to do. Now, I have a question for you. If someone wants to educate themselves on how to write a book, what resources would you recommend, uh, both for adults and children? Uh, well, I brought some of my favorite books. I love books on, on writing. I think they're wonderful. So I brought some. This one is fun. This lady is out of the box, original, <laughs> if you want to write. She's uh, an interesting person, and she talks about her writing classes. and It's just a really fun book. This is by um, a journalist full of good hints about writing in wow. all kinds of different areas. This is one of my favorite books. It, I didn't steal it from the library. Someone bought it from the library. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Walking on Water by Madeline Lengel. Oh, that's a great book. It's great book. for any artist. It's just wonderful. Um, Frances Mays, I love her. So she's got a book on 
about poetry that she used in her writing writing classes. And then I bought this book, The Making of a Poem, so that I can understand the different genre in poetry. Yeah. You know, there's different forms. Totally. It's important. This is MFA in creative writing. It's it's um it's about uh the kinds of things you would study if you were getting a master's in fine arts and writing. And I used some of the things in my classes. Oh my gosh, you've got this a... one is fun. Uh, reading like a writer. It's, oh, that's great. It's the way that you analyze what you're reading. Like, oh, why did they do that? Why did I like that sentence, you know? You're right. And then some other things. One of these is called The First Five Pages. It's written by um, an agent, and he tells why he keeps or throws away a book after five pages. You know? Oh, wow. That's important to have. So is. these are great resources. They're, yeah. So that's great because you can have your own class right here, mm -hmm. read these books, and yeah. be inspired on what to create yeah, and what to get write. Them in the library. You don't even have to pay, you know. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Which is what a writer would say <laughs> save money and <laughs> love the library. But if you love the book, then buy it. You know, if you're going to read it 10 times, you know, and yeah. you want to write in it. Yeah, then totally. Then you buy it. Yeah. It's amazing, Pam. Mm -hmm. Pam, in the process of you beginning to see the changes and shifts of what's happening. What, how important is writing to the movement here at Bethel Church? Oh my goodness, it's huge. Um, I think there's a writing anointing on Bethel. Uh, I think that's obvious. Personally, I think it, it's because Pastor Bill was obedient to the Lord years ago. With to Habba write. Yeah, Habakkuk too, too. That's what I think. But, um, but it, a lot of people have felt a call to write because we have something to say. Yeah. We have something really needed and it's so important. Yeah. And and it's important to say it well and to say it in such a way that um it touches lives. That's huge. I, I just isn't it amazing how one man's breakthrough really changes and it brings others into breakthrough. I know that's one of my testimonies as well. Yeah. And I just want to encourage you like let let Bethel's testimony be your testimony. And one of the things that I believe really strongly in is that it's time for the different types of writers to emerge. Yeah. It's time for the poets. It's time for mm -hmm. the ones with children's books. It's time for the different types of styles with the different mm -hmm. types of audiences. Mm -hmm. I, I love spoken word and writing oh, there too. too. And, mm -hmm. and it's like we don't have to pigeonhole ourselves in thinking that we have to write. Yeah, books. It doesn't have to be books. Exactly, yeah. in a certain way. So. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. I love that. We're, uh, we're really, this again is Pam Spinozzi, and she's joining us talking about writing. So make sure that you look at this, study all of the books that she's recommended on writing. Uh, what, a question I have for you, Pam, mm -hmm. is in regards to what you're doing in writing, uh, oh, Jennifer asked, thank you for joining us, Jennifer, when is Pam's next class? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm teaching a track in second year of writer for writers in second year school of ministry, but I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I would really encourage you to check out, if you're not local here, check out some great books and just get involved that way too. Um, Pam, but what simple exercises can people do on a consistent basis to grow in their, in their writing yeah, skills? Yeah, um, I think it's really good I don't know if we're going to talk about how to become a writer. Is that coming up? No, yeah, you can talk about okay. it right now. Yeah. Um, okay, here's how I feel. I am a teacher, first and foremost. So <laughs> she is. I really believe if you feel passionate about an area of the arts, you should get training. And that can look like lots of things. It could look like getting, paying for a, a good class somewhere. Mm -hmm. But it could be an online class. It could be a free class. It could be a city class. It could be a workshop and a conference it could be an That's online right. you know there are so many ways to learn I think it's important to learn um, secondly for writing exercises there are lots on online actually there's a really good um, magazine called the writer's digest and it has great information and they have a website as well um, that's awesome I think it's really good to be in a critique group like a like a writer's group even if it's you and two friends yeah because the act of giving someone feedback is as helpful as receiving it, and it's really good. It's really good to... There, I, I just have to, like, confirm that to you right now. If you want to write, tell somebody. Yeah. And get people and interview writers and yeah. do what Pam's talking about. Look online if you can't yeah. get to 
uh, a, a college or another yeah, area and race. just begin to grow in that skill and then submit some stuff to some of the writing contests and things yeah, that are out there yeah. and just see how you can grow and what you can do. Yeah, it's not impossible, no matter what your situation. I went to a writer's conference a few years ago and one of the keynote speakers, her title was how to become an overnight success in 17 years. <laughs> but she was uh, a mother. Um, she, they really needed her income. Yeah. But she had to quit her job to de dedicate herself to learning to write. And she did everything she could to learn to write wow. and to write and write wow. and write and write. She's making millions now. But she gave herself to that for 17 years. Not saying that everybody has, a, has that time. And but... not everybody's going to make millions. But you know what I mean. Yeah. But like... Her story was inspiring that she wanted it enough to give herself to it. That's amazing. Yeah. So good. And the Lord gave her a niche because her niche is that she writes romance novels that are clean. How about that? <laughs> Come on. We need that. <laughs> wow. And, yeah. and Lizzie all thanks you as well out there. So thank you, Lizzie, for joining us. And we know that Pam has been an incredible instructor to so many people. But Pam, back to you. What do you foresee is next for writers who want to impact history today? What do you see as the trends? What do you think are some next stuff? Okay, uh, do you really want to know? I do. I'm dying. Don't you want to know? I am, I am resistant to trends <laughs> because I think the important thing is to be genuine. Yes. And if you are uh, grabbed by something and you write that in spite of what's the trend, I think that's what's gonna that's gonna work, and I always feel like the mm. difference between like if we take music, you can you can write a little bitty on your computer and touch the person sitting next to totally. you. But if you want people to be still listening to it two hundred years from now, like Handel's Messiah, you need to go to another level in your in your dedication to your craft. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So I think if you dedicate yourself to learning and growing and practicing and and you um, and you write from your heart what's real because I would like to see the day when we as Christians we're not trying to be as good as everybody else but we are getting new ideas from God that nobody ever thought of before. that's right because that's right. he's so creative you know like Montaigne he created he's that's a Frenchman right. who created the essay it didn't exist before it was a new genre yeah and there was another Frenchman I think who created the fairy tale once upon a time and you wow. know what I mean like why can't we get a new genre from God like yeah. from you know so that's what my dream is that we would get ideas that nobody's ever done before and we would start the trends because we heard him. Well, it's, it's like what, That's first, what my dream is. First Corinthians 2 talks about yeah. that. It talks about the fact that there's a secret wisdom. Yeah. That's been, I, I think, just it's for this time. It's yeah. for this era. Yeah. That, and we talk about, you know, how when a person, like you, you talked about, to thine own self be true. Yeah. When you come into that point where you it resonates, what you're doing comes from your heart, yeah. not to impress anyone. Yeah. Then it's like that. It does impress people. Exactly. I mean, there's a place for following the trends and all that, but but what if you so don't fit in that? Then you've got to be you. You've oh, got yeah. to give what God's given you. So oh, I don't yeah. know. I'm really like maybe too far on that end, but no, yeah. I, I think you asked. So. I'm glad that you said that. Yeah. I mean, isn't it great? Everybody. Everybody's that's watching different. it's okay to be peculiar <laughs> it's okay to be unusual yeah. because that's the way that God created you and that particular peculiarity that could be the way that God's created you to write and to find out what he really wants yeah. to transform people and I love that it's so true in all the arts you know there's such so true. variety you can't just be an artist you're all kinds of different artists you know whether you're in music or oh, I know. dance or I know. The visual arts and, and what would have, so different. What would have happened if, if we would have if we would be playing music that was popular ten or twenty or thirty yeah. years ago? Yeah. It's like now yeah. God has God has things keeps in going. store, keeps going. Yeah. And Handel's Messiah will stand the test of time. It's that yeah. that pull as well. Yeah. We have to be have that in, internal reason yeah. of why we're creating it. Yeah. And for whom we're creating it. Yeah. It's huge. Uh so Lastly, I really want you just to begin to look at like because you deal with you deal with writers from all different kinds of mm -hmm. stages, ones yeah. that are very professionals, 
ones that are not, yeah. ones that are just growing. Yeah. So what would you say generally to the population about, about how they can how they can pursue yeah. writing? Ooh. Yes. Doesn't matter what level you're at. Um, first, you don't compare yourself. Um, everybody becomes a writer by reading and by writing. Everybody. That's how you become a writer. I mean, you can study, which I think is important. You can learn, but you must read. And you should read um, in the kind of thing that you want to write. So if you want to write novels, read a lot of novels. If you want to write screenplays, you know, watch movies and read screenplays. If you want, you still need to know the technique. Yeah. That doesn't mean you, you can bypass that. You need to know the techniques for screenwriting or the techniques for novel writing. You need to know that. Yeah. But you need to read because that's what makes people great writers. Usually my favorite writers are people who just read, 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 read. You know, it's not interesting. You know, like those people who are in jail for thirty years and they've read everything on earth, <laughs> totally. come out and write bestsellers. You know, or or something, or they had a difficult childhood and they stayed in their room and read all the time, and now they're like the best writers in the world. You've got to read. You really have to read. So, so part then part of the journey of becoming a great creative in any field. Obviously, we're talking about writing today, but is that we have to know our craft. We do. And I don't think people should take up writing because they think they're going to make money. <laughs> let's you might laugh not. at that. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. laugh at that. No, don't do it for that reason. Do it because you have this thing burning in you that you have to get out. And you love the process. You love the process of writing. Yeah. You know? I loved where, in fact, we're going to have Paul Young here who wrote The Shack and the movie's coming out in March. Mm -hmm. And he wrote this out of his own pain. And yeah. he wrote this for his family with no... No, there there wasn't any kind of hint that he w would ever think that this yeah. would be successful. Yeah, and look. And look at where it's headed now and what's happening because of... So I think that coming the truth about who you are and being mm -hmm. vulnerable and mm -hmm. sharing that, especially in what people are going through today, it yeah. hits that chord that immediately brings success. Yeah, um, you know that saying, if life hands you lemons, make, make lemonade. lemonade. I have a friend who says, if, if life hands you pain, make great literature. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm. Well, I I know that we all have not only loved hearing from you, Pam, but I would love for you just to take some time and just to impart to people that are watching, okay. that are creative in any field, but especially for writers out there, and just begin to like impart to them so that they can yeah. go to the next level. <laughs> okay. Well, Lord, we just we just thank you for the writers and the artists who are on this this um, at, at this time with us. Lord, I thank you that that you made them creative, and that's such yeah. a joy because you're so creative. You're so full of life and ideas and color. And Lord, I just pray for each one that he or she just loves who you've made them to be and offers you their gift. Because it's like the little boy who gave the, the loaves and the fishes. You blessed it. You broke yeah. it. And you distributed it, Lord. So we just, we give you our gift, be it ever so great or so small. And we just know that as we exercise it, as we use what you've given us, you'll give us more. Yes. And if, as we give it to you, you'll multiply the, the influence of it. And so I just, I bless them to, to do that, to just give it to you and to expect your blessing on it and to walk with you in it. And I pray for them that writing will become um, a, um, an experience with you, like uh, an encounter with you, a fun thing to do with you, and that they will just learn and grow and, and um, be able to find that place of real communion with you that, that extends beyond them and you to the people. Like We just thank you, Lord, for what you've put on their hearts. And we just thank you for your blessing on them. In Jesus' name. Thank Amen. You, well, thank you again for joining. And we just together, Pam and I, say yeah. like, it's time for you to take your dream and begin to yeah. develop that and begin to like look at the strategies that Pam has yeah. shared with us today and begin to get one of the books, begin to look at a class that you could take, but begin to just write and read and pursue your call and mm -hmm. uh, and we're just glad that it, it the things that we're learning mm -hmm. here at Bethel are that there's things that are in our heart that unless we share yeah. we can't create change 
So create change with words, mm -hmm. and that will create different worlds of, an, of what God can do in others. So thanks again for joining us, and let us know what you think. If you have any comments for Pam or I, just write them down. Can I say one last thing? Of course. Oh, you know that day that you think might come someday when you'll have time to write? That's only going to come if you make it. Come on. Did you hear that? <laughs> that was a great word to end in. Thanks again again for joining us, and we'll see you next Bye. week.